What's up you amazing hackers, I hope you're doing well today. We're going over some activities that I really like and uh, we're going to explain a couple of things from those activities. Let me know in the comments below if you like this kind of episode because I want to do a lot more and I hope you do. So let's get right into it, shall we? The first activity I want to show you guys is from R0Hack, really cool name by the way, really like it. Uh, and he showed us a cross-organization data access in citymobile.ru. Now, the first thing I do when I read these activities is I go through them, of course, I read them a little bit, but I also look at the website that they're hacking because I want to know what they're hacking and how they're hacking it. So the first thing I do when I see a URL is go and look at it. Let's go and do that, shall we? And when we do that, we come on this Russian website and here you see some taxi stuff, like you see a taxi image and another taxi image. And you can also just use your Google Translate plugin to get to know a little bit more about the application. So this seems like you can order some taxi rides on here or something, something to do with taxis. Now taxis have licenses, of course, they have a driver's license. So let's read what the summary says. Le legitimate partner's super user account could have access to information of drivers belonging to a different partner, including passport and driver license. So this tells me a couple of things. First of all, that you can register as a partner on the website. So there must be different partners on the website. And uh, it also tells me that you can access that user's data. So um, a couple of things that are interesting from that are the severity, which is high in this case, as you can see, it's a 7.1. And the reason for that being so high is because it includes the passport and driving license data of other people. And that's personal identifiable information or PII. You might see that term a lot more, uh, especially in the coming years because of GDPR. Um, but G uh, PII is a really sensitive topic, so if you can access information that's personal identifiable information, such as a phone number, such as uh, f uh, like an SSN, you know, um, all of that kind of stuff, that's of course going to raise your severity, and that's why we have a high or a 7.1 here. Now the bounty is also pretty interesting, $8,000, damn, <laughs> that's nice. But you can see that there were a couple of participants and that's because there were collab here. And that's also pretty cool. I really like doing collabs. So uh, that was the first activity for you guys. Really interesting one. Now we're on to the next one, which is two factor authentication bypass by sending blank code. And this one is by safehacker27. Uh, and in here you can see a couple of things. So first of all, again, a domain. So let's see what the glassdoor.com is just to make sure that we know what it is for a little bit. Let's open the website. There we go. So glassdoor seems to be for finding a job, something along those lines. Um, let's go back to the activity. There we go. And let's read the summary for you guys. This is a failure in a null check of the entered code. In simple terms, the two-factor authentication while logging in can be bypassed by sending a blank code. This could be because of incorrect comparisons of entered code with true value code. A pre-validation may be null check before comparis comparing the codes would fix this issue. Affected URL or selected assets are glassdoor two-factor on authentication and there are uh, there is an affected parameter of code with a vulnerability type of improper authentication and this is browser independent now a couple of things here guys i really really like this report because he gives a whole lot of detail sometimes uh, vulnerabilities are browser dependent so you have to report what browser you are testing on um, you can see that he also gives what asset he was testing. So those are really interesting things. Uh, also the affected parameter, and uh, that's something I wouldn't directly report, but cool that he included it, really like it. And then the most important thing, steps to reproduce, POC or get the fuck out. Now, uh, the steps to reproduce are login to Glassdoor and navigate to security settings. 
enable two-factor authentication, log out, log in again, and notice OTP is asked. Now using Burp Suite, intercept the post request by sending an incorrect code, do not forward. Before forwarding the request to the server, remove the code and forward. So uh, what he's basically doing is he's logging in and en enabling two-factor authentication. He is then logging out and he is, uh, rem he is basically entering an incorrect two-factor authentication code when logging in again. And he is intercepting that request and he just removes that two-factor authentication code. So basically there are no checks on the, the, the 2FA. Uh, which means that he can just enter a blank code and it works. So the impact here to factor authentication protection bypass Attacker could gain access despite having Sorry, but Bob that guys despite having we're worried the two factor authentication protection by a victim So really good report again this is also a high and why is this a high because it's related to account security now if you have anything related to account security like the two-factor authentication bypass here you're automatically going to gain some uh, impact because of course you don't want that two-factor authentication is there to protect your account in case you get hacked and if it doesn't even work that two, that two factor authentication, then it's useless, you know? So really good find safe hacker, really good find. And also the bounty again, really good. I really like these bounties. Now onto the last one we have for you guys, which is CSRF protection uh, deletion on, uh, sorry, CSRF account deletion on website. So there's this uh, US Department of Defense website and they have some CSRF issues. Let's see what they are, shall we? So for the summary, a CSRF vulnerability against the blank allows target to delete user accounts. The impact user who visits a malicious site could find their account deleted. And then we have some reproduction steps again. So create and log in a new uh, create and log into a new account on the website. Provide the HTML file and press the POC button. Note that the POC is used only to make testing easier and is not necessary in an actual attack scenario. And then we have step number three, refresh the page on the website. You should find that you have been logged out and are unable to sign back into the account. So really good steps. Um, might have made them a little bit more uh, elaborate let's just, let's just say i would have also told him how to generate the proof of concept but if you included it that's even that's also good of course you can just include your proof of concept i always tell people how to generate it for themselves because i find that easier but of course the original steps could have been a little bit different you, you don't know about when when you read these activities it could be that the uh, summary is a lot different from the actual report because companies can choose what they want to disclose or not so that's why they, they have that difference now what these steps are basically saying is that there is this functionality to, to delete your account and this functionality is not protected by a csrf token so that means that you can uh, include the functionality to, to delete an account on the US Department of Defense website and you can include that code on your own website and when somebody visits your website and clicks on that link they're going to have their account deleted if it was logged in into another tab so you guys are noticing a lot of ifs here and that's why this is also a severity medium um, of course you don't want your account deleted so it's really annoying and you have to fix it but there are a lot of ifs you have to be logged in the user has to visit your website user has to click on link uh, that kind of stuff so but still really really good find i like this one a lot because it shows you how easy it can be to um, it can be to forget stuff you know so just test everything try to see what happens just remove your csref tokens just try to change their values a little bit all that kind of stuff there are a million tests you can think of probably so uh, he also included some suggested mitigation 
if you guys can do that it's always highly appreciated because you probably understand the vulnerability pretty well at that point after you report it so that was it i would like to thank you guys very much for watching Ooh, sorry guys if you enjoyed these videos please let me know because i'll make more of course and i hope i'll see you